I'm the chair of the board of directors, and um, uh, we have other members of the board here. Um, the members of the board, can you guys uh, please uh, raise your hand and so people can see who you are? Guys, they're serving beer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, they're serving beer, serving uh, bratwurst, work in the front door, or they're all over. Uh, and also, we have lots of staff members. And uh, uh, staff members, can you raise your hands? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So if you, look, if you have questions, you can look for people with uh, green lanyard, and uh, and hopefully they'll be able to answer your question or, or point you towards someone who can. And we do have our areas open. The the uh, production area and the retail area are, are open for uh, for people to look around. And we do have people in there that can answer. Uh, questions um, about those areas, so uh, please feel free to wander around and, and take the tour on your own and, and uh, just see what it is that we do here. Um, I hope most of you saw when you came in that the bathrooms are right up here in the uh, in between the front door and uh, uh, this by this hallway over here. But um, anyway, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to also thank you all because you've uh, helped us over the last 10 years. So. Uh, you know, this has uh, allowed us to become who we are. So, um, I also wanted to tell you a quick story, and then I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Charles Brennick, which, uh, whom, whom most of you know already, but uh, uh, I wanted to tell you about an experience I had about 10 years ago, and this is actually how I met Charles. Um, uh, I went uh, to Guatemala with my family, and we, instead of just taking a normal vacation, we decided we were going to do a... Uh, uh, something where we could help people and this was especially our teenage kids we felt like this would be useful for them so we went to Guatemala with a, with a friend of ours uh, that was a college professor taking a group of students down there and they did a certain amount of uh, service learning and uh, there were we toured a lot of schools we saw these schools were you know they had very little a lot of time some one of them I remember didn't even have desks and chairs they just had little benches that went around the wall and uh, we we helped them fund uh, doing uh, chairs and desks and so forth um, out of that trip. But um, uh, I went to one school, they asked me to stop in where, uh, well actually on the way down we've been asked to, to bring a couple of computers and so we took desktop computers and I took a monitor and my son took a, uh, uh, the CPU and somebody else brought the keyboard and, and we checked them in our baggage when we went down there and, and you know it was a terrible way to do things. We thought you know there's got to be a better way than that. But when we got down there, the, the school, one of the schools I went to uh, was a high school that had about 80 students that were sharing five PCs in the little lab that they'd set up. And uh, four of them weren't working when I got there. But they were uh, uh, all things I could fix with my Swiss Army knife for the most part. There were just like bent pins or little tiny things that just needed to be tweaked to be able to make them work. Uh, there was one I couldn't get, to, uh, get fixed that just needed a new keyboard. And we sent that um, when we got back. But, um, you know, they had a lot of problems with not knowing how to maintain their equipment and uh, really weren't sure how to train people and there wasn't the internet connection at that time and so forth. But I got back up here and I looked and I found an organization that was uh, sending large amounts of computers. They were sending um, uh, container loads. And it wasn't interconnection at that time. It was another one that was on the, uh, the East Coast. And they said, well, there's been some other interest from some other people in Seattle and so we'll set up an event. So they set up this event in a... In brought all their e-waste and everything and, and uh, we did some kind of rudimentary testing and then we packed it all in and shipped it off and, and uh, actually I think Charles was uh, left to try to figure out how to how to uh, get rid of all the stuff that was left over in fact and uh, uh, so that's where I, I actually met Charles but you know when we did all of that it was a good thing because we shipped more computers but at the same time there were a lot of problems the the drives weren't erased uh, beforehand, the, the stuff wasn't thoroughly checked, and, and you know there was a problem with the amount of stuff that was not working when it got down there. And you know one of the things that Charles shares with me is that we both thought there's got to be a better way. And you know Charles uh, took it upon himself. He said, "We're going to do this through interconnection. We're going to do it right." And you know he uh, uh, he really uh, uh, did make sure that there was a regular supply of, uh, of materials. Uh, working with uh, uh, Craig and uh, uh, with Total Reclaim and uh, also uh, he made sure that everything was tested that uh, all the hard drives were white and set up a procedure for all of this all of these things to make sure that uh, that everything was done and um, you know he kept looking for a better way 
And so, you know, he's uh, uh, continued with the program, and uh, I'm sure he'll tell you uh, uh, more about it, but uh, really, after 10 years, uh, he's still looking for a better way. We've shipped 25,000 computers, changed the lives of uh, many, many more people than that. And uh, uh, in large part, thanks to, uh, to all of you that are here tonight. So again, thank you very much. But uh, without further ado, let me introduce the guy that's always looking for a better way to do this, Charles Bennett. First thing I want to say is there is a polka band coming later on. So, just so you know. All right. So I just want to give a quick presentation on um, uh, where interconnection is from, how we started, um, some of our accomplishments, and, and where we're going, sort of the future of interconnection. Um, but first, I want to start with um, just a. a some brief details on you know, what does interconnection do, what's our mission, you know, what motivates me, um, you know, why this organization exists. And I think I can do that with, through, through basically just, just one example of one of the shipments that, that we've done. So several years ago, I, I, I shipped some computers to, to Paraguay. And you know, I have a special fondness for Paraguay because my wife's from Paraguay and I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Paraguay, but kind of beyond that, I still work with a lot of charities and so forth in Paraguay. Um, the unique thing about this shipment was I was actually able to go to Paraguay and see the computers being used by the charity that we shipped them to. I, I, unfortunately, I don't get to travel to all these great places where the computers are going, um, but this case I did. Uh, and this charity, uh, what they did is they, they helped children whose parents worked in the city uh, and gave them a place to be when the children or when the parents were off off working you know and and this charity was located out in the outskirts of the city and basically the parents would have to take like a two-hour bus ride to get to town they'd work all day long you know, come back at eight o'clock and in the meantime the kids really had no place to go it was kind of like a, a boys and girls club but in you know a third world which is pretty basic so uh so basically, the, 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 the charity supported these, these children, gave them some food during the, during the day, gave them some training, but it was a really basic, rustic setting. I mean, there was like, I got there, I was really surprised. I mean, the kids were eating from cracked bowls, they were, you know, having a little bit of noodles to eat and so forth, and so it was really uh, amazing, or not amazing, but uh, uh, shocking. But so we, so we donated computers to them, and the computers had arrived before I got there. And when I was there, I could see that the kids were actually using the computers to, to learn about a world outside of their little community. They were, you know, the internet connection, uh, the, the connection was slow, the internet connection was really slow, but it was still good enough to send emails and so forth. They were able to, you know, gain skills. They were able to, to, to use the computers as a tool for increasing their, their learning capacity and increasing their opportunities. And, and that happens all the time with, with the computers that we ship. Unfortunately, I don't get to see all the different stories that happen, uh, but it happens you know, around the world. And, and so that's kind of the gist of what we do, is basically we take stuff from companies and individuals in Seattle, we put it on you know, containers or whatever, we ship it to these remote places, and it's about creating a connection between people that have lots of stuff and often throwing that stuff away and then connecting it with people that need that stuff. And so it's, it's interconnection. It's, it's about creating opportunity through, through, through reuse, through, through um, you know, resources. So how did all this start? <laughs> Back in 1997, uh, I was living in Costa Rica. I was doing an internship for, a, uh, for an ecotourism um, organization down there. They developed ecotourism projects. And, and one of the things that, that we did, in the organ and I, you know, I did, was, was develop websites for these organizations in the middle of nowhere that nobody really heard about, but they were doing great stuff. They were, sending, they were doing these little small community-based tourism projects. But nobody heard about them. And then we built a website for them. And then within months, people would start coming to these projects. Because this was 97 when you could build a website and actually people 
could find the website. You didn't have to pay Google a whole lot of money to like advertise your site. So you know, back then, you know, the internet was an extremely powerful thing, and that was kind of like my aha moment. It was like, wow, this this internet thing is powerful. You know, there's you know, technology is powerful. It can really help people. So when I got back to the states in '99, I I started the internet connection. I started the nonprofit, and there I am, ten years ago. And this is the first, the first website of, of uh, interconnections. So uh, you can see it was it, it really had nothing to do with computers at that time. It was more all about websites and creating this connection. And uh, kind of the funny part of this is the very first interconnection office was above the Tractor Tavern in Ballard. So it was a very convenient for breaks, <laughs> that sort of thing. So although I had to leave at about eight o'clock when the music started pumping. And you like that? <laughs> so like I said, so at the very beginning it was all about websites and donating websites and it had this thing called the Virtual Volunteer Program that matched people with web skills here in the States with people who needed websites in, in, in the developing country. Very successful program, we donated about 120 laptop, or websites, uh, increased the visibility of you know, the organizations, helped a lot of different groups. But one of the things that the organizations kept telling me was is, hey, it's great to have this website, but we don't have any computers to access them. You know, it's great to have a site, but we gotta go to the, you know, the library to even, you know, use our website. So that's when I started to, to basically ship computers. It was really, you know, one, two at a time, laptops, that sort of a thing, but there, but there was this need of, of computers and technology. So slowly but slowly, we started to ship computers. In 2005, I opened up a center in Fremont um, on 35th Street, and this is the very first warehouse. As you can see, it was pretty rusty. So our, our, our benches were made out of pallets that my dad helped me build. Uh, the computers were on basically uh, uh, these wooden crates. Uh, you know, things were kind of haphazardly done, but, but we made it work. And at the very beginning, I had some really good partnerships that really helped, helped get things going, and that was, you know, Total Reclaim. They started giving us computers. And I also got a bunch of stuff from uh, Microsoft Community Affairs. And so that was kind of the spark that really, you know, got things rolling. 2007, we moved to the facility that was over in, uh, on Pacific, which was a bigger place. We were there for five years. Things started rolling once again. We, we, we uh, developed the, the, the training program, which teaches people how to, you know, fix computers. Um, we, we, our production got better, started being able to, you know, crank out lots and lots of computers. Got into more of the recycling and things obviously really started to grow. So I was establishing relationships and, and obviously, you know, things kept progressing. And here we are now, 2011, in this, you know, facility, things look more or less organized uh, and, and, you know, we're continuing to grow. So that's where things started and I guess where we are today. And so what has happened during this period of time? These are some of the accomplishments. So we've shipped, you know, as Tim said, we've shipped 25,000 computers. What does that mean? Well, we've, we've, we've helped at least a quarter million people because every computer is not used by one individual. Generally, it's used by 10 people, especially in the school environment. 3,600 people have gone through our training program in the Seattle area. And then we've, we've properly recycled over 100,000 computers. So. Pretty, pretty phenomenal. But once again, what does that mean? What do those numbers mean? So once again, I want to show you uh, some of the some of the stories, some of the some of the ways that all this work has helped people, you know, around the world. You know, an, uh, an example is we shipped some laptops to Peace Corps volunteers uh, in Namibia, and they gave uh, the laptops uh, they were using as a laptops as a way to teach people about HIV. Uh, prevention and education because the laptops are kind of a hook to get people to, you know, to get youth you know, interested in, 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 in reading about it. A couple years ago we shipped 4,000 computers to schools in Chile uh, and that was you know, obviously massive, massive um, uh, uh, project that, that um, uh, really you know, progressed things. Uh, we've also worked with Peace Corps around the world uh, Belize, Cameroon, Western Samoa, uh, pretty much everywhere you can think of, the places you don't even know about, like Vanuatu and Burkina Faso. I mean, I, I look at a map for those. <laughs> also, uh, more recently, got into disaster relief. So, one of the first things actually we did related to the disaster relief was we donated a whole bunch of computers in, in, uh, during, um, after Katrina. 
Uh, we sent a bunch of computers to New Orleans. But more recently, we've shipped computers to Haiti. We shipped computers to uh, Pakistan, Chile, after these these, these horrible uh, events. Uh, we also uh, last year we partnered with Dell, HP, NetHope, and, and Microsoft to ship laptops to aid workers in in Japan. So we shipped 250 laptops to aid workers in Japan. So. Uh, We've also partnered with uh, Microsoft Community Affairs to ship uh, some of their surplus computers to organizations that they support around the world. So we've done shipments to Vietnam, Chile, and even locally we work with the, the, the Quillahoot Senior Center uh, and the Boys and Girls Club. And, and over there there's a shipment that we're working on now that's going to the, to the Czech Republic. Uh, and more recently we've been working with TechSoup. TechSoup is the largest uh, provider of non, uh, large, largest provider of technology to to nonprofits in the nation. So they're a nonprofit themselves, and they give donated software to other nonprofits. And now they're they're providing refer, uh, refurbished computers to nonprofits in the nation. And so that's dramatically increased our scope. And in fact, we've shipped computers to 46 states, except for Alaska, and North Dakota, and South Dakota. I guess they don't need computers there. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and so how, how, how has this happened? Well, it's obviously not just me. I mean, it, it, it's all about the, the partnerships, the volunteers, uh, and the staff, right? I mean, we've got, we got a tremendous group of volunteers that are coming in every single day, learning about computers, gaining skills, and helping us out. We have numerous corporate, corporate uh, partners, uh, corporate donations. You know, we get product from uh, like Nintendo and, and, and those sorts of companies that, that, that um, give us items. Uh, and our partners, like some of, the, some of the groups that I just mentioned, like you know, Microsoft, um, TechSoup, and, and Total Recall. Um, and obviously the staff is, has been tremendously supportive, uh, and as long as the board of directors. And so our future, where, does, where is all this, what's going to happen, the interconnection, where do, where do we want to go next? Um, you know, some, some kind of uh, exciting things are we'll be launching this A-plus hardware certification program, and, and uh, that is a, a, a industry-known certification that relates to hardware. So anybody that's looking for a job that says they have A-plus on their resume, there's a better chance that they're actually going to get a job because it's, like I said, it's, it's very well known. Um, we're also launching a computer grant program for local recipients that'll, that'll be able to um, get computers to the hands of more people. We'll have expanded technology offerings. That means we're going to be offering better computers. We'll be offering different products. We'll be offering different technology. And right now we're offering them a, we'll, we'll be offering a thing called multi-point, which allows uh, one computer to support various uh, uh, different seats or different users. It virtualizes the desktop on, on different screens so that you can ship one computer, but it can support like 10 users or 10 uh, a bit complicated, but just wait and see, it'll be cool. <laughs> uh, also directed giving, which, which means a corporation will be able to say, hey, we want to help, we want all of our computers to go to Boys and Girls Club, or we want all of our computers to go to TechSoup. It'll, it'll, it'll allow the donors to leverage their donation, to direct the donation, and, and they'll have control of it. Uh, and also, I obviously want to continue to strengthen these partnerships that, that we've established over the years. So, once again, thanks for all the support, but now it's time for the ask, right? You gotta, that's what nonprofit guys do. So, so Interconnection is a, is a unique nonprofit organization. It's not one that's, that's uh, funded by, or we don't pursue cash donations, although you, if you have cash that you want to donate, you know, no problem, right? But, we don't pursue grants, we don't pursue cash donations. We're a 100% self-sustainable organization, which is pretty unique in, in, in the nonprofit world. But what we do need is, is computer donations and computers. Basically, computers are what drives this engine, is what keeps this place going, it allows us to, to give computers to people in need, and it also is, is a revenue generator in terms of the, re of the recycling and other ways that we can we can generate revenue off of it. So that's basically the, the, the way that you can support the organization by telling um, you know, the, your places where you, the place where you work, telling your IT person, spreading the news, um, and just, just getting the word out, just letting people know about what we do and, and, and that we do, uh, you know, what they can do with their computers. So, so that's it. Hopefully it wasn't too long. And uh, so we got lots of 
lots of beer, lots of sausage, and polka band. So, thank you, and we have a few more speakers, so, thanks. Um, all right, so now I'd like to introduce Robert, Ro Roger Ab Abraham. He's the Vice President of uh, Product Programs at TechSoup Global, which I mentioned was the, the huge nonprofit. And, and we, are, we are working with them. We have this fabulous partnership where we're able to now provide nonprofits to, or computers to nonprofits across the state, or across the nation. So, thank you, Roger. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Roger Abraham. So it's really a pleasure to be here. I want to thank Charles for inviting us. Uh, we're located in San Francisco. And uh, TechSoup is a nonprofit organization, and really our mission is to help other nonprofits and other types of social benefit organizations, such as public libraries, to acquire, learn about, acquire, and utilize and deploy technology to improve the way they operate. So we do that now in the United States, and we also do it in 36 other countries. And uh, this year we'll, we'll help about 90,000 organizations take advantage of technology through one of our programs. We work with a lot of uh, corporate donors who provide the products to us, such as Microsoft, Cisco, Adobe, and others. And uh, one of the programs that we operate is called the Refurbished Computer Program. Uh, we've been doing refurbished computers for about five and a half years, and uh, when we started the program, which was actually before I even came to TechSoup, we were looking for a partner, because we don't have the capability to actually do refurbishing ourselves, we were looking for a partner uh, who could provide that to us, and we really wanted to find a nonprofit partner, but uh, most of the nonprofit partners who do refurbishing are kind of really small operations, and they they didn't have the kind of professional level of quality, robustness, and capacity that we were looking for. So, at that point in time, we opted to go with a commercial refurbishing partner who we were still working with. Uh, it was only about six months ago that we actually developed a relationship with Charles, and I'll tell you, it's been like a breath of fresh air. Uh, we share really the same lens that we, that we look at our business through, and we share a lot of the same ideals, the same mission, and uh, it's completely different. I can tell you, even though the commercial partner we're working with, great team and really nice and very professional, they're not on the same wavelength as, as, as we are and, and Charles is. Uh, so over the past six months, we've uh, served about 400 organizations with Charles. And just as an example of kind of the partnership and to bring Microsoft into it a little bit as well, Charles mentioned uh, he gets computer donations sometimes from Microsoft, and he recently got one that included a lot of uh, 240 volt machines that aren't uh, usable in the United States. And he asked TechSoup if we could help him to find a destination for these machines. Uh, we have partners that we work with in 36 countries. These are NGOs in country. So we put out a basically a request for proposals from our partners uh, to see who would be interested in these machines and what use they would, intended to put them to. And uh, we found a partner in the Czech Republic who is going to place these machines in public access, like at senior citizen centers and libraries and other places where they can really be leveraged for a large population of users. So that's an example of the kind of three-way partnership that is so special and so effective in really helping large numbers of people. Uh, so I, I, I know there's a lot of speakers here tonight and we want to get to the polka dancing. So <laughs> I don't want to take any more time, but I just want to congratulate Charles on this really great facility. It really demonstrates a level of professionalism and quality that you know, we as a, as, a, as a vendor really in this field are looking for. And Charles is now able to provide and really delighted to be able to work with him. So thank you very much. Okay, now we have um, Bob Hoopy. Bob, Bob um, helps set up and manages a program called the Technology Services Corps. And this, this organization uh, basically allows students at some of the local high schools to travel abroad and, and set up 
computer labs and set up technology labs and basically teach people abroad, internationally, in places like Nicaragua and so forth, how to use computers. And so Interconnection has been working with Bob and, and technologists here at Square for several years now. We've done a few collection events together, and uh, which means, you know, computer donation events, and um, they've taken a lot of our refurbished equipment. So, Bob? Well, thank you. I, I'm honored to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of the small guy who's worked in the labs and, and brought high school kids here to work. We were just starting our organization about four years ago, and we were looking for a partner to work with because we wanted our kids to have experiences in fixing computers and getting them ready to take to other countries. So we found out about interconnection, and I called Charles up, and uh, he agreed to talk with us and we started to work in the lab in the old building, not the really old building, but the one over by Lake Union and um, got on their Christmas card one year as a matter of fact. Uh, very first year we took computers out here to Guatemala and installed them. Charles talks about not being able to go and see what the fruits of his labor are. We get to do that. We've taken computers to Guatemala and built a computer lab in a little <coughs> local school a little bit outside of Antigua. We've taken computers to India, we've taken computers this summer to Africa. I myself have traveled to Nicaragua twice uh, with computers and built a computer lab one year and then we went back the next year and we repaired it. It didn't need a lot of repair actually, they've been pretty good about um, supervising it. We brought a bunch of digital cameras and we taught the kids how to use it, take pictures in their community and then created PowerPoints this summer and worked with them in partnership. We had. 14 of our high school kids were working with 14 Nicaraguans, and we just had a wonderful time. We've really always enjoyed working here in Connection. Um, this is a picture, actually, of a couple kids working on their PowerPoint at, um, in, in Nicaragua it, with the computers a year before that we had built. So I really wanted to go back and, and see those computers in operation. It was very exciting. Um, we're actually right this very night um, recruiting kids for two more trips that we're going to take this summer. We're going to be going to Costa Rica and uh, in next July and this February we're going back to India with another, with one of our board members' daughters is over there right now is organizing a trip. So we've always appreciated working with Interconnection and it's been a lot of, it's been a really good education for uh, <coughs> high school students. I. My own son worked here for two years. He's now a, a sophomore at Harvey Mudd College. And uh, he got really excited about technology while, while he was here and was always trying to be one of the people that got his name up on the board as having fixed the most computers successfully. So I really wanted to thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you. So next we have uh, Craig Lorch. Craig, Craig is the, the co-owner of Total Reclaim. And Total Reclaim is the largest electronics recycling company in Washington, and they also have offices or, or warehouses in uh, Alaska and, and Oregon. And Craig and I go back a few years. Um, like you said, the, like I showed you in the slide, uh, in the very beginning we were receiving uh, computers from Total Reclaim, and, and these are actually being donated from Total Reclaim, and at that time I didn't realize the value of <laughs> computers in terms of scrap value and so forth. But Craig was still donating that product and, and uh, you know, obviously that, that's one of the things that really helped, helped us uh, get going. Um, and Craig is just going to talk about the, the relationship. So, thanks. Thanks, Charles. Uh, I'm not the polka band either. So, uh, <laughs> Our history of Total Reclaim has been in business since about 1991. We have a background in recycling appliances, uh, HVAC equipment, rooftop air conditioners, refrigerant gases, and fluorescent lamps under different company. Um, we didn't start recycling electronics until about 2000, and that was as a result of a, a computer recovery project that King County kicked off and resulted in, I don't know, the first 7,000 computer monitors that were recycled in this region. Um, and we started, so that the computer recovery project eventually became the Take It Back Network, which is the retail network for dropping off your 
fluorescent lamps and your computers and that sort of thing in this in this area. Um, we started uh, working with Charles back in about 2003. At that time, I guess uh, the material that came to us came from a donated donated uh, a drop off from a collection site that he had. Um, Charles brought to us a, uh, a an African fellow named Abdul who is still on our staff and. And Abdul started working for Charles one day a week and four days a week for us. And he was going through computers and he was choosing the ones that were useful and the ones that wouldn't be useful and, and segregating them for the materials to come down to, to Charles' programs. Um, at that time, I think you were, you were located the, across from the old dog food factory over in, in Fremont. Um, and I've got a bunch of factoids that, uh, that Charles gave me, but... Um, um, between 2005 and 2008, we uh, shipped them 14,246 computers and 1,922 monitors. Um, other things are, on their behalf, we recycled 8,032 monitors, 3,857 TVs, about a quarter million pounds of peripherals, uh, 6,170 pounds of plastic, 17,000 pounds of circuit boards, a half a million pounds of metal, and uh, 8,700 pounds of, of copper wire. So a whole lot of stuff has flowed through your hands to us. Thank you very much. And I'll bring it on. We'll keep bringing you more. Um, a lot of things kind of fell off. And there was a big change when the eCycle Washington program, our product stewardship program, started up here. There's been a lot of sort of, I don't know, juggling and resettling of, of, of relationships. Um, and so we didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of material coming down here for a couple of years, but um, um, we're looking forward to working with Charles too. We've been talking with uh, Charles about expanding that program and getting back to bringing more material to this fantastic space. So congratulations, Charles, and uh, thank you very much. So the next person is uh, Gretchen Dio. She's with uh, Microsoft Community Affairs and heads their software donation program. We've been working with Microsoft Community Affairs for over seven years now. Uh, and like I mentioned too, we've done a lot of shipments for them. Right now we're working on a shipment to, uh, to the Czech Republic. And, and obviously it's, it's a fantastic relationship. Um, and we hope it will continue. Great, well thank you Charles. Um, as Charles just mentioned, um, Microsoft has been working with Interconnection for about seven years now, since 2004, and I'm actually fairly new to the citizenship team at Microsoft, so I uh, asked around to my colleagues to learn a little bit more about the relationship, and I was really struck by how um, Microsoft donates this hardware and software, and it's, um, you know, we are proud to be donating it to Interconnection, but how Interconnection is able to take those donations and really um, act quickly in times of disaster, provide um, IT skills training with these donations to disadvantaged people, and really take those donations and um, give them to people that need them. And the stories that came out of that were were really amazing, so I was you know, delighted to be here and um, just be a part of this um, great opening of this facility. Um, but I did want to provide a few examples of, of Microsoft's donations and, and where they've gone, because it's wide-ranging. It's, um, it's not only around the world, but also a lot of donations have affected some of the organizations um, closer to home here in Seattle. So um, Interconnection has refurbished and shipped over 2,000 Microsoft donated computers valued at more than one million dollars um, around the world, and donations were made to projects in Pakistan um, to help with aid with the humanitarian humanitarian relief efforts following the floods, to schools in Kenya, to a training center in Romania, community youth programs in Slovenia, and nonprofit technology learning centers in South Africa. And then a little closer to home, uh, Microsoft, uh, donations were made to nonprofits in the U.S. that were supported by Microsoft, including the Boys and Girls Club of King County, the WYCA um, Treehouse, which supports foster children, um, Stride Center provides technology skills trainings for low-income people, and as Charles mentioned, to victims of Katrina. 
And then um, one of the really amazing stories also is mentioned, but um, how Microsoft worked with Interconnection, Dell, and HP to ship over 200 laptops to the first responders in Japan following the tsunami. And um, just that it was so critical that that um, delivery was made in time so that those first, first responders could use that technology in order to get water and food and medical aid to those that needed it. So um, just some great stories about what's happening with some of the donations that Microsoft has made. But we are very proud to have a partnership um, with Interconnection and um, absolutely look forward to it continuing. And um, just congratulations on this great opening and I'm glad we could be here to support it. So next we have a couple of our volunteers. Um, we get on average 20 volunteers a day that come in and help us out. Um, and like I mentioned, about 3,600 people have passed through, through this, this program. Um, tonight we just have two volunteers that have incredible stories. Obviously, there's many, many more. Um, but this evening we have uh, Robert Jones and Omar Jallo that are gonna, gonna speak a little bit how the program has helped them. So, Robert? So I was an um, intern and volunteer for January through May. Um, I was part of the names of people that were laid off in two thousand. They were affected by the 2008 um, economic crisis. And so I took advantage of the workers retraining program that the state of Washington offers, knowing that uh, our skill levels need to, if we can, if we can increase our skills, um, more likely we'd be an employee. Because they were at the time in 2009 when I was laid off. It was almost eight people for every job, um, applying for every job. So I went to North Seattle Community College and I was in, the, um, I decided to go with the, to increase my skill set to go with the IT program there. And so as a requirement of their program, we have, uh, they require an internship. And a lot of internships have gotten scarce now because, uh, especially with IT, because there's so many workers that are available and with a little bit more experience and a uh, fresh new student. And fortunately, um, I heard about Interconnection as they were advertising on one radio station, I was going to school on um, 1090, and they talked about the reuse. So we had computers in my, um, a lot of neighbors had computers want to read don to donate or do something with them. So in the future, I was going to look at the possibility, but then I looked up the website and found out they had internships, so I applied and was able to meet Hana and was accepting to the program as an intern. So um, I was in my last quarter of school, and so it helped me put me over the bump with graduating. Um, out of that experience, I was able to learn how to especially work with um, the different processes here, but especially working with a laptop and a group of laptop, and um, learn a lot from, especially like the other shop, Steen over here. He d deals with a lot with the laptops and was very knowledgeable, helped me out a lot. I, would, I was not known at the computer, at um, our apartment building as a computer guy. But what, what especially helped out about this program was knowing that you were giving back to not just our local community, but worldwide. Um, it was volunteering, but it was something that you knew that was going to affect other people that we take for granted with, it, with um, our access to technology here. And so fortunately, it was helping me able to um, on my resume to show that I had continuity. And, and also in the interview, you can bring up the subjects, um, especially I have recently, I was hired um, for a contract position with Microsoft, and I was able to bring in, interconnection was brought up in the interview, and I was also able to describe the, the laptops they were using. I actually worked on these laptops that they were using, um, Similar, I mean, of course, they have the newer ones, but we were we refurbishing them. Talk about the problems and issues that they come up with. So, yeah, yeah. And so, it just showed that it does help. And as now I'm able to contribute again, um, I donated a few computers here from our apartment building um, two weeks ago when I came in to tell exciting news to the staff here about our being re reemployed. I was bringing in a donation again. So, I'm going to continue to contribute where I can and uh, hopefully, um, and also spread the word about donating, like Charles mentioned, and, and also just give an example of someone how it's helped out. I'm able to contribute again as a 
paying tax member and also a you know, person that can donate and get the word out about how important this organization is. So thank you. Samsung, Haya, Huawei, APC, just to name a few. Um, part of the partnership was um, staff of Quantum Net need to be trained to be able to support their products. Um, I was among the lucky ones to be trained in how to support their products. And I was also um, Nokia's care manager. I was head of electronics and um, I also supervised the local area networking here. I mean, this is the experience that I came with in the United States. And when I came here, one fine evening as I was browsing the web, I came across interconnection. And something that I saw got my attention, and I quote, Interconnections is a non-profit organization that helps charitable organizations worldwide realize their missions by providing them refurbished desktops and laptop computers. To me, this was a very important thing. And I decided I was going to partner with anything that I would see in That was how I came to join Interconnections. When I applied, I was um, admitted into the volunteer program. And uh, I, I would say I was honored. And I shared my experience with staff and equally learn from their experiences. And uh, to be honest with you, being a volunteer uh, with Interconnections gave me a lot. First, I was able to provide one fortunate family member in my country and one friend a laptop thanks to Interconnections. Secondly, I also enhanced my knowledge and skill sets that I came with from back home, and that is a bonus. Thirdly, I also received a strong letter of recommendation from Interconnections that today saved my future in the United States. And, uh, thank you, Charles. And thank you, Anne. And again, I am still a volunteer and I will continue to do that. And I've been trying to get a lot of my friends on board because it's a good thing to volunteer. You're trying to give to the community something good. And this, to me, is very noble. I will continue to do that, and I will continue to invite friends to come and join Interconnections. I want to seize this opportunity to thank Mr. Charles, Hannah Mandela also, who is the uh, volunteer coordinator and productions manager, the entire staff and management of Interconnections, and the team of volunteers that also volunteer with Interconnections. And I thank you all for coming here tonight. Thank you very much. Julian Lowe is here with us tonight. He's the um, governor representative. And he has a message from uh, great Governor Gregor, sorry. Uh, big, uh, back in 2010, we received a grant from the state, uh, the Workforce Investment Act. And that grant um, is being used now to, to get what's called ISO 14001 certification and R2 certification. And R2 is the, the, one of the, the highest levels of uh, uh, certifications for electronics recyclers. So it's going to allow us to uh, kind of be on par with some of the, some of the big guys and, and, and be more competitive. Um, and, and obviously the state and, and the governor allow us to do that. So. 
Good evening. Um, you know, I'm not too happy with Charles right now. Not only is he forgetting my boss's name, you know, she <laughs> said if she's not running for re-election, people start forgetting already. <laughs> and I'm also not happy with him because I have to follow those two moving stories. I look at the slide, my soul patch isn't as good as what his was back in the day, so uh, not very pleased at all. But no, in, in all seriousness, um, you know, we all have friends or colleagues or neighbors who are going through some really tough times. And to have heard those stories, um, to see this fabulous new facility here uh, in Fremont is, is really, really exciting. I mean, this is the highlight of my day. We've got interconnection here that is making it happen with a multiple bottom line, whether it's with, uh, you know, sending computers around the world to help in disasters, whether it's helping with sustainability, whether it's providing volunteer opportunities for folks at Microsoft, or uh, as my colleague from the Department of Commerce here, James Palmer, providing uh, opportunities for youth. I mean, this is what it's all about, and a multiple bottom line, um, and Charles, uh, I want to thank you for all that you have done there. Um, so I want to wrap it up with uh, some greetings that I'm here to deliver on behalf of Governor Gregoire. Governor Gregoire. <laughs> I'm pleased to extend warm greetings to all those attending the grand open, opening of Interconnections' new Seattle facility. Interconnections has proven to be a valuable asset to the community, supporting our collective efforts to act as responsible stewards of the environment while providing a substantial amount of workforce development in Washington State. Interconnections' dedicated staff of 15 has provided more than 127,984 training hours and counting to over 3,600 volunteers at the organization's computer reuse center. The basic IT skills that these volunteers have gained represent an opportunity that most participants wouldn't otherwise have had. I commend Mr. Charles Brennick, founder and director of Interconnections, for his pioneering spirit and commitment to community service. With sustainable business practices becoming a high priority, companies and organizations require computer and electronic recycling facilities like Interconnections. I'm proud to, to have bold leaders like Mr. Brennick and his associates contributing to the success of local businesses and citizens, and I'm confident that Interconnection will enjoy many more years of continued success. Thank you for coming this evening, and please accept my best wishes for a memorable time of celebration. Sincerely, Governor Chris Gregoire. Our final um, speaker is Michael Aldridge. Uh, he's one of the board members of Interconnection, and as Tim pointed out, some of the board members. And, and I just want to say that um, um, I really appreciate the support that my board has given me over the over the uh, last couple of years. It's it's really beneficial to have really smart people on your board who can <laughs> help you out and kind of guide you through some of these times. And and Michael is one of those those people. And uh, He's going to talk about our, our, um, our grant program and then our direct giving program. So, bye. I think we missed a few slides. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, thank you, Charles, for that kind introduction. Um, uh, I, uh, I came to the connection about two years ago. Um, I had been uh, at Microsoft for 15 years and, and also then worked at the Gates Foundation. I was fortunate enough to actually work on technology in emerging markets and, and how technology can impact people who make less than a dollar a day. And was very moved by what I saw and wanted to work in that space. And, uh, and I ended up finding Charles and Interconnection, and it's been just an amazing match, and I've really enjoyed it. And I can say I've seen firsthand what a computer can do for people um, in the developing world. It's incredibly transformative, and this is an amazing mission that, that Charles has been able to continue for over a decade. And what I'm really here to talk about today is some of the exciting ways that we're really growing that mission uh, and expanding it. Um, and it, one of the things that we talked about as a board and with Charles over the last year is that we've had a lot of dramatic 
um, stories, as you've already heard tonight, about uh, how we've been able to ship computers all over the world. But we also know that we as a country today are, are hurting and that we need to expand our local impact. And there's a lot that Charles has done through the volunteer efforts, but there's also a lot more that we feel we can do. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how we're trying to expand that and how we're trying to really create opportunity for underserved communities even in our own backyard. So one of the things that Charles has done is actually a low-income purchase program. This is really, you know, as, as we know, technology knowledge, and as we've heard, technology access is crucial for employability. You really can't survive without a computer and, and access to the internet, uh, whether it's the skills that you need for your job, or whether it's just trying to find jobs out there, period. Most of them are now on the internet. You, know, you can look in the newspaper and, you know, the, the the classifieds are very thin now because everybody puts their jobs on the, on the web. If you're not on the web, you're not going to be able to find them. So this actually promotes computer ownership for qualified low-income populations who can show a proof of income. And you can come right into this store and you can get a laptop as, as, uh, as little as $175. And this is launched last month and it's available today, as I said. And I think it's one of the really cool programs that, that Charles has been able to get off the ground here. Now, one of the new things that we're announcing tonight is a Puget Sound Technology Grant Program that we're going to roll out over the next year. And this is really designed to, as I said, expand uh, our impact locally in the region. We want to grant uh, at least 30 laptops per quarter to local organizations, about 120 per year. But we want to do more than that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, our criteria right now is really to look at local 501c3 organizations who are really providing internet access directly to people, whether they're community centers, whether they're schools or retraining programs, or they're organizations that do amazingly important services, crucial services, but need to have infrastructure upgrades and can't afford them. Um, and so those are the two areas that we're really going to try to focus. We're going to be launching this uh, in the next quarter of this year, and we'll be doing it online. So there's an online application at interconnection.org. Um, and and I thought I was going to actually be the, 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 the last line of defense before you could actually start drinking beer and wine. I was relieved to find out I, I'm not. But I am your last line of defense before polka. So this is the last slide. And then I'm going to allow you to enjoy polka and allow more drinking. But our key goal in 2012 is expanding this technology grant program. And this is where many of you in this room might be able to help. Well, first of all, any of you that have an old laptop that you need to get rid of, you can, you can make a difference by actually coming here and donating, as many people have talked about already. But we also want to expand our capacity. You know, today we can only afford, in terms of our bottom line, uh, to, to do those 120 laptops this, this next year. But we'd actually like to double or triple that. And for less than $75, our raw cost for taking a donated machine and refurbing it we can actually get it to an organization that can have dramatic impact in our local community. And so for a $10,000 do $10, donation from an organization, we could actually double our capacity next year. That's a really small amount of money to impact a lot of people's lives. And so we hope that you will, out of this, go out, spread the word, whether it's your friends that you know have lots of PCs, an individual PC, an individual laptop can make a huge difference as well. But if you also know somebody out there that could be a potential donor that's interested to make an impact at a grassroots level, we'd love to talk with them. Charles would love to talk with them. So I hope that we, we leave you with that as, a, as something to think about as you enjoy uh, some amazing wine, beer, and uh, some incredibly uplifting polka. Oompa pa! Thank you very much. I, I just want to close by saying uh, thank you to everybody who came here tonight. Thank you to you know friends, staff, board, uh, partners. Uh, I really appreciate it, and you know hopefully we can look forward to another ten years. So have a good evening.